Author's Note This video is my review of the Dark Knight Trilogy, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises, based on Batman by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, directed by Christopher Nolan, published by Warner Brothers, DC Comics, Legendary Pictures, and Syncope. Batman Begins, published by Padalex 3 Productions, starring Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Katie Holmes, Cillian Murphy, Liam Neeson, Aaron Eckert, Heath Ledger, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Marion Cotillard, Tom Hardy, Anne Hathaway, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. All three films are rated PG-13. The review of the Dark Knight trilogy is dedicated to the memory of Heath Ledger, the actor who played the role of the clown prince of crime, the Joker. I don't know. I swear to God. Swear to me! Ah! I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. And Gotham is... Ashes. Then you have my permission to die. Well folks, after announcing this review back in December of 2018, I am finally fulfilling my promise of reviewing the entire Dark Knight trilogy in one review. Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. I've waited a long time to do this, and now is the time to get down and dirty. So let us jump right in folks, the pinnacle of my review on Batman. Let us review all three Dark Knight films done by Christopher Nolan, starting with Batman Begins. I can't wait to dig my claws into this. And here we go. In 2005, almost a decade after Batman and Robin hit theaters, Warner Brothers and DC Comics decided to reboot The Dark Knight in the form of Batman Begins. The movie was a big success, grossing over $373 million worldwide and paving the way for the Dark Knight trilogy. Years after his parents' death, Bruce Wayne goes on a journey of self-discovery. At the end of this dark path, he emerges to become a vigilante known as Batman, dedicating himself to fighting crime in Gotham City. Compared to the Burton-verse, there are words that can truly describe this film. Darker, grounded, adventurous, subtle, and scary. I prefer the atmosphere of this film over the four Burton-verse films, as it told a more mature tale of The Dark Knight, almost similar to the animated series, though some parts do drag on a bit too long, as I did feel anxious on wanting to see the Cape Crusader in action. I'm Batman. For Bale's performance as Bruce Wayne, I originally saw him as a lost man, trying to find his place in the world, not just in the death of his parents, but how he trained himself to become who he is. That being said, once he becomes the Batman, it doesn't take long to showcase what he's learned through the years, and despite his own flaws as a Dark Knight, he still pulls it off, learning from his experiences as he evolves through the mantle. Would you like to see my mask? There was a nice cast of characters from future Commissioner Jim Gordon to Bruce's childhood friend Rachel and even Carmine Falcone. But the one minor character who stands out is Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow. What I liked about him was that he had a calm and cool attitude as a psychologist. But underneath that mask is a madman of fear, putting his victims into their worst nightmare with his toxins. He almost felt a lot like his animated series counterpart. Surely a man who spends his nights scrambling over the rooftops of Gotham wouldn't be right to me dual identities. And of course, I have to talk about Henry Ducard, aka the real Ra's al Ghul. It's not just to the fact that he was involved in Bruce Wayne's training, nor is it to the fact that he was behind the events of the story that unraveled, but it was more to the performance of Liam Neeson, who you all know is Qui-Gon Jinn from Star Wars. He did a great job showcasing his skills as a devious chess master, and since then, I think villain roles fit him better than hero roles. 
and I think he got the picture. Nice coat. Thanks. It was only the beginning of a trilogy, but Batman Begins was the way to go. It changed the tone from the Burton verse and created a storyline that was fun to follow from the beginning to the end, and I highly recommend checking it out. Though that pales in comparison to our next subject, The Dark Knight. Let's check that out, shall we? In 2008, Warner Brothers released the sequel to Batman Begins titled The Dark Knight. The film was an even bigger success, generating a billion dollars at the box office, and has been labeled as the best live-action Batman film ever. As Batman's war on crime continues, he forms an alliance with Lieutenant Jim Gordon and District Attorney Harvey Dent, but the war will take a turn for the worse when he goes up against the famous clown prince of crime, the Joker. It's simple. We uh, kill the Batman. <laughs> Compared to Batman Begins, The Dark Knight is more action-packed. I felt a bit more on the edge of my seat as the story went on, seeing all of Gotham City plunge into chaos. The entire story, much like Mask of the Phantasm, molded together with nearly everyone playing their role and how it all plays out. The story is also the darkest of any Batman live-action film, let alone the entire trilogy, and this theme is all about fallen heroes, and it's not just Batman in the spotlight. What gives you the right? What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. Speaking of which, we see more of the Batman in action compared to the last film. In fact, we see him with more of a moral code despite of all that he went through, and how it's pushed even further as the story went on. It was almost as if he came this close to killing the Joker as the Dark Knight is pushed over the edge. That being said, some parts of him felt like James Bond of all people with the use of gadgets and stealth, as well as his mission in Hong Kong. I was this tempted to call him Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Agent Double O Bat. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. As the story is about fallen heroes, it is also about Harvey Dent. Like Batman, he too had a moral code of his own, and a dedication to bring justice back to Gotham City. But as the story went on, Big Bad Harvey began to take over, and he goes from a white knight to a demon we know as Two-Face. It's really sad to see him fall from grace, and some of you will feel sorry for what he goes through all the way to the very end. And that's despite his own crimes. Little fight now. I like that. While the Joker lacks the chemical bath of his various counterparts, he's as much of a complete monster as most of them. Even compared to his animated series counterparts, the Joker is far more cruel, vicious, and chaotic. He enjoys tormenting the people of Gotham and doing what he can to push Batman over the edge. All just to see the world burn. And it's a shame that Heath Ledger didn't live to see the full film, because he gave the performance of a lifetime as the Joker. After all, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Why so serious? The Dark Knight is, without a doubt, the darkest Batman live-action film ever. It takes what made Batman Begins great and bumps it up tenfolds, creating what many Batman fans call one of the best Batman films of all time. And I highly recommend this without a doubt. And with that, we will move on to our final film, The Dark Knight Rises. In 2012, Warner Brothers and DC Comics wrapped up the Dark Knight trilogy with The Dark Knight Rises, marking the end of an era and paving the way for a reboot from the DC Extended Universe. Eight years since disappearing from the spotlights, Bruce Wayne is forced to come out of hiding to become the Batman once more, but faith in the system will be destroyed with the arrival of the Dark Knight's greatest threat ever, Bane. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. The first part of the final film felt a bit too similar to Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. It also felt a bit on the long side and yet with little of the action. But when the second part of the film kicks in, it actually felt refreshing. A Gotham where all hope is gone, where hell now roams the streets, 
and where evil rules with an iron grip. I've never seen this in any form of Batman media till 2012, and I'm glad to finally see it put to good use. I've buried enough members of the Wayne family. Like with the Dark Knight, the theme of the film is also about fallen heroes. This time, we see how far Bruce Wayne has fallen, how he let his pride get the best of him, and how he sunk down to his lowest level ever, even topping the death of his parents. We also see how far Commissioner Gordon has fallen as well, seeing his spirit break further and further as the movie goes on. As a story element, hopelessness felt like a good addition that pushes Batman and Gordon even further than before. Never steal anything from someone you can't outrun, kid. On the one hand, I enjoyed the presence of Selena Kyle, aka Catwoman. While not as over the top as Michelle Pfeiffer, Anne Hathaway played a more clever and cunning Catwoman for this film and helped drive the romance plot between her and Bruce Wayne. But on the other hand, I wound up enjoying the story arc of John Blake. What I liked from him was how he survived the worst hell of Gotham City, separated from almost all of the police force, and how he pulled through to help out as a solo freedom fighter. Guess he was more than a mere Robin. This, this is the instrument of your liberation. A lot of you are going to hate me for this, but this version of Bane is my absolute favorite. While he lacks the venom of his other counterparts, he is still as cruel and as clever as those counterparts. Maybe even more. And even with the lack of venom, Bane doesn't hold back with his superhuman strength, even delivering an iconic backbreaker to the Batman. It's a shame he's not the real villain, because he holds almost as much water for this film as the Joker did with the Dark Knight. Makes me want to see more venomless Banes in the future. And yes, Mr. Wayne, it does come in black. While not on the level as the Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises provides a satisfying end to the trilogy, if it was a bit slow in the first act. It closed up what started with Batman Begins and chose a unique way to end one of the best eras in the legacy of Batman. And with that, I have completed the reviews of all three Dark Knight films. But we're not done yet. Since 2014, I've been reviewing films based off Batman, and what made me enjoy doing that was the various takes on the Kate Crusader, be it as campy as Adam West, as dark as Christian Bale, or a mix of both with Kevin Conroy. For me, I have done more reviews on The Dark Knight than any other subject since 2014, even eclipsing My Little Pony and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As long as there are Batman films that are waiting to be reviewed, or if there are new ones coming out, I'll keep talking about the legacy of The Dark Knight. It could be animated, or it could be live action, but I will always have a soft spot for Batman, and as long as Warner Brothers and DC Comics continues this legacy by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, I'll keep at it. Anyway, it's time I signed out of this mega review, and it was a hell of a ride with The Dark Knight Trilogy. A hero can be anyone, even a man doing something as simple and reassuring as putting a coat around a young boy's shoulders to let him know the world.